All right, we'll look at the actions that these hormones do. And I'm guessing, at your guys' age, you're, you're probably thinking of hormones and completely, which it is, it is part of this unit. But there are so many different hormones that are used daily. Uh, hormones are, there are hormones that are steroids, amines, this is kind of some organic peptides, proteins, glycoproteins. All of these different substances can affect these target cells, even if they're only there for a very short duration. So hormones are a group of different type of chemicals that can be transferred through different areas. So steroids. Examples of steroids would be estrogen, testosterone, probably the most common ones that you've heard of. Uh, amines come from amino acids. Epinephrine, norepinephrine, possibly you've heard of those. Uh, peptides come from amino acids. Oxytocin, you may have heard of. Antidiuretic deals with water regulation. Uh, proteins or polypeptides, which are long chains. Growth hormone is probably the most common one that you would have heard of. Uh, prolactin deals with milk production. Glycoproteins, uh, actually biology, whether you remember this or not, but we talked about FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, LH, luteinizing hormone, so those are glycoproteins. So there's different examples or different groups of hormones. If we look at the steroids first, steroids come from cholesterol. We talk about cholesterol levels. Everybody has cholesterol. You need cholesterol in your body. It's just when those levels get too high that it becomes a bad thing. Uh, lipid, they're fat soluble and they can pass through cell membranes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So come from cholesterol, fat soluble, lipid soluble, and they pass fairly easily. Uh, carried in the bloodstream by weakly bound, they bind to plasma proteins that are in the bloodstream. And by weakly bound, that means that they can easily unbind from those proteins. Uh, receptors. If I have a target cell that's going to pick up a steroid, it's going to be inside of the nucleus. So steroids have to enter the cell and get to the nucleus to actually perform their function. Uh, then that receptor binds with the DNA inside of the nucleus and activates specific genes that make proteins. So back to biology again, protein synthesis. Um, I know we talked about transcription, translation. Uh, your steroids are very important for dictating what proteins are made and translated. A uh, diagram, not going to go over this all that much, but very similar to diagrams that you should have seen in a biology class. So transcription takes place in the nucleus, translation is going to occur at the ribosome. So here a steroid comes in, it's going to enter the nucleus, it's going to combine with the receptor, so it's going to attach right here. So now I have my hormone and the receptor that are hooked together, they are going to um, not by, well, bind for a short period of time to your messenger RNA inside of your nucleus. Then that information is shot out, it's translated, and it says go make whatever. Uh, insulin, we talked about a lot in biology. So a steroid may tell your DNA, I need more insulin. I need more whatever. So steroids have to get into the nucleus because they target your DNA at some point in time. Non-steroid hormones are going to combine with receptors that are in the cell membrane. 
They don't have to get to the nucleus. Uh, they have a binding site and an activity site. So those are going to be separate. Uh, the hormone receptor complex, so it's the site with the hormone attached to it, triggers a cascade of biological activity. It's going to trigger a set of reactions through the cell membrane, and that's called signal transduction. So that should be something new. Signal transduction occurs at the cell membrane, non-steroid hormone. A uh, hormone receptor complex then is going to activate a G protein, and then it's going to activate an enzyme, adenylate cyclase, that is bound to the cell membrane. So steroids nucleus, non-steroid uh, cell membrane. Uh, ATP, ATP has three phosphates. This enzyme removes two of them to produce cyclic AMP. So biology again, we talked about ATP creating ADP. It loses one phosphate. In hormones, it's actually going to remove two phosphates and produces cyclic AMP, which is only going to have one phosphate. And then that's going to activate different proteins. And that's going to, those proteins will create the changes that are needed. Not every non-steroid hormone is going to use that CAMP, that adenine and 1-phosphate. It may use something called diacycloglycerol, DAG, inocytal triphosphate. So there's a couple other ones. I don't really expect you to remember all of those names. So diagram here, here comes my non-steroid hormone. It's going to attach to the cell membrane. It's not going to go into the nucleus. Here's my ATP, the two phosphates are taken away. And now I have CAMP. It's going to activate a protein, so it's inactive once it uh, absorbs or takes on the CAMP. That protein be becomes active, creates whatever changes are needed. So very in-depth background. We will talk more about actual things that happen with all of the glands. Uh, last set then, uh, prostaglandins are lipids. So this is also a little bit different. They're locally produced lipids that affect the organ that they're produced in. So they don't travel. Prostaglandins produce a, a large variety of effects. They might relax muscle. Um, they might contract muscle, simulate secretions some affect blood pressure. So prostaglandins, here again, is a, a large group. It's not one specific type that we're going to look at. My tidbits here so far. One, make sure you know where these glands are located. Two, steroid goes to the nucleus. Non-steroid goes to the cell membrane. Prostaglandins don't go anywhere. They stay at the place that they are produced. Um, nervous system and your endocrine system work together very closely for these things to happen. My next few goals is that we are going to talk about the specific types or the specific organs and then actual specific uh, hormones they produce and reactions that they cause. So that, make sure that's where I want to stop. Yep. Next time we'll talk about control of hormonal secretions. So we're kind of in the nuts and, bolt, nuts and bolts background part of it. We'll get to more of the specifics that I think you'll actually find more interesting in the next couple of days.